the second Leonora Overture by Beethoven, Opus 72A, played by the London Symphony Orchestra, conducted by Felix Weingartner, recorded on January 14th, 1938. Here with the final portion of our Collector's Autumn program this week, Don Tate. For the Leonore Overture Number 3 by Beethoven on this all-Beethoven program, we're going to return to Villa Mengelberg and the Concertgebouw Orchestra of Amsterdam, whom we heard perform the Overture Number 1 earlier on the program. In introducing Weingartner's recording of the second Leonore Overture, we talked a bit about the difference between these two conductors, Mengelberg and Weingartner, even though they were among the most famous Beethoven conductors of their time. The difference between Weingartner's somewhat cool classicism, although it could be very powerful and exciting, and Villa Mengelberg's almost rhetorical sense of drama, the flair and the color that he brought to his music making. There is another aspect to Villa Mengelberg that often has been talked about over the years, especially in the many years after 1945 or so, when very few Mengelberg recordings were available, and about all that one could hear about him if one wasn't able to get those out-of-print records was the gossip, and sometimes even the innuendo that was printed and said about Mengelberg. And that was the charge that Mengelberg was, as George Selwyn put it, quote, the great distorter. There are Mengelberg performances that contain some rather eye-opening mannerisms, slowing down, speeding up, and other things. There also, however, is a great deal of evidence that that was something that developed in Mengelberg's conducting after he passed the age of 60 in 1931. Everyone who has written about him, going back to the turn of the century, back to the days when Mahler had such great admiration for Mengelberg's conducting, has talked about how in his earlier years Mengelberg's conducting didn't have those many mannerisms, and that that developed as he became an old man. In some ways, this is one of the problems that one faces with recordings of great artists who began their careers before recording was really fully developed. We're only able, for instance, to hear Arthur Rubinstein play in the second half of his life. We really are only able to hear Arturo Toscanini conduct after he turned 70. And with Mengelberg, most of his recordings were made after he was 60 in 1931. The farther back one goes with Mengelberg, the more one finds a straightforward, beautiful approach to music, a very lyrical and singing approach, free of any of those mannerisms, the kind of thing that made him world famous by the time he was 30 years old. We're going to hear a performance like that now. A recording made in 1930, one year before the Leonora one that we heard before, and incidentally a little better recorded. One has again, all one gets with Mengelberg, the combined sustained tension when the music seems almost suspended but never loses its pulse, and the tremendous forward drive always under control in the fast passages that plus the perfection of the playing and the beauty of the color and the depth of the emotion. And here's the music. Villa Mengelberg and, actually, truly, his Concertgebouw Orchestra of Amsterdam recorded in that hall on May 30th, 1930 in the Leonor Overture Number 3 by Beethoven. <laughs> Overture number three, Opus 72A by Beethoven, played by the Concertgebouw Orchestra of Amsterdam, conducted by Willem Mengelberg, recorded on May 30th, 1930. A recording that really proves why Mahler and Grieg and Debussy and Ravel and Bruno Walter and Leopold Stokowski.